All right, Thought Experiments, an online tutorial series designed to help creative-minded people just like you turn your passion into a career. Roll the clip. So, we've talked about framing, we've talked about camera movement, now it's time to talk about editing, where all the pieces come together, where you can take normal looking footage and really create something special. By choosing your shots in post-production, you're telling your viewer, okay, this subject or this object has significance, and this helps to tell your story. The interesting thing is that the stories aren't really being told on the screen. It's all happening in the viewer. They're sitting there, they're viewing your images that are being played one after the other on the screen, and they're subconsciously analyzing and making sense of what they're seeing. So the images have a certain relationship with one another, and this example is called the Kushlov effect. So you can take images that don't necessarily have a connection with each other, but once organized together in post-production, you can create something that wasn't there originally. This footage is from an original experiment done by Lev Kuleshov himself. He took footage of a man staring into the camera and put different clips in front of it, showed it to the audience, and the audience went absolutely crazy saying how wonderful an actor he was, how he portrayed his role so well, when in reality, it's the same shots played over and over again with different images in front. So what's really going on is how the viewer is perceiving what's on the screen. That's where the story takes place. So the bottom line is that all the impact that's happening in your film is happening in the reality of the viewer. So with that concept a little more understood, let's start with some main decisions when creating an edit that flows naturally and has an impact to your audience. The very first thing as being an editor is knowing when to cut. Holding some shots intentionally and cutting other shots they all have to have a reason. They have to be showing the emotion and conveying the story of your film. So let's take a look at this cut. There's not a whole lot of time there for the viewer to be told what's going on. All the edits are being cut to the same beat and there's no standout shot that's saying, hey, this has significance. This is what the person's feeling. So let's take a look at this edit. You can hold shots of significance both on a subject and an object. Both are giving the viewer time to allow them to connect with what the subject is feeling and help tell the story. The next thing is shot ordering. The general rules of film say that you want to start with your master shot and work your way into the subject closer and closer. You can use this technique to successfully tell your story or you can actually flip rules like this around and work your way through a scene from close and work your way out to wide. When you're starting in on a scene on a close-up, there's an air of mystery there. You don't know where your subject is. So the next thing that's on my checklist when making a cut that's allowing the edit to flow naturally is always to cut on action. Cutting on action sort of makes the cuts in the film more invisible, more transparent. With this cut you can see that I'm cutting on the action of the subject and it has a much more natural flow to it. With this cut, I'm cutting in between action. It doesn't necessarily have the same flow and smoothness that cutting on action does. So the next thing is choosing the right take. You can shoot a scene a million different ways and it's always important to have as many options as you can, as many angles as possible. There's a lot of factors that come into play when creating a powerful shot. The distance between the subject and the camera, the movement that the camera is having, the height at which the camera is in relationship to the eye level of the subject. Some shots can convey a certain feeling of calmness, more serious, more energy, and some with spice. <laughs> So this last technique is something called eye trace. The idea is that the viewer can only focus on one part of the image at a time, no matter how much of a wide or close up shot it is. So in this shot, the viewer's attention or eye trace is gonna be at the bottom left corner. If I cut to the next shot and the viewer has to shift their focus from the bottom left of the screen to the center of the frame, it's not gonna be as much of a smooth transition between both shots. So with this next shot, the viewer's focus is staying in the same area of frame. This creates a much more transparent cut from shot to shot.
So the idea is, as the editor, you're controlling where the viewer's looking, what they're seeing, how they're feeling, and what story is being told to them. If you can successfully control all of these parameters, you're creating a cohesive film with seamless cutting and creating a space for your viewer to really actually absorb what message you're trying to convey through your medium. As an editor, you're just like a DJ or a chef. You're saying, I'm gonna sprinkle some of this in there, throw some of that right there, bring some of that in there, boom, baby. And the more you understand what's going on in your audience's mind, the more you can successfully take what's going on up here and express that in your artistic medium. So, master these rules and principles so that you can create a much more dynamic and cohesive film. Always have in mind what your viewers' thoughts and emotions are. Subscribe to get these videos beamed directly into your consciousness and become a creator. <laughs>